Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. It is Sunday afternoon, just went on a walk, about 70 degrees outside. Super nice, we've been in a winter wasteland for a little while. And uh, took advantage of that before it gets dark, because they robbed me of an hour of daylight, which means tomorrow, Monday, I'll leave work, hopefully around this time, and I'll be driving into the black abyss of the night, which is why I'm just such a fan of daylight savings time. Absolutely love it. Nothing quite like leaving work and driving home into a dark abyss. But, with that said, another similar dark abyss would be Amazon, and that is right, we've got another Amazon tool haul. So, uh, we're going to jump right into this. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. Let's, uh, first up, right here, this is something kind of random, uh, but I felt like it was worth mentioning. This is from Aero Cosmetics, This is their, which is conveniently in San Antonio, which is cool for me. Uh, but this is their wash and wax all. You can think of this as like a quick dealer, quick detailer. A waterless car wash, something along those lines. Cleans and protects its wet or waterless wash and wax. And I guess this is kind of intended for like the aviation industry. Somehow over time, I guess people on the automotive side started using it. There was a crossover, probably some dude, you know, was working on a plane. He's like, you know, I wonder if that would work on my car. And probably tried it out on his wife's vehicle or a buddy's and found that it worked pretty well. This is something I would not have bought. But a couple weeks ago, the roof had to get redone from the hailstorm, including on the shop, finally. Uh, it's been here since 2006, and apparently it lasted long enough. So uh, 13 years, that ain't bad for a metal building, in my opinion. But I had to tarp everything, because you never know, like, if the insulation and dust, if there's going to be anything coming down. Uh, on a charger in particular, it was filthy, and I could not move it to wash it, because I'm in the middle of a lot of work on it. And subsequently, I didn't want to just throw the cover over it, uh, so I used this, and I gotta say it did a pretty legit job, and uh, it's not too expensive. The price point, I believe, is $21.95. Uh, shipped very nice. It does come with a spray bottle. This is not one of those cheesy, stupid ones that's tamper-proof where you can't ever get it open, including if they're cheap sprayer that's tamper-proof breaks, and you wind up having to drill a hole in the bottom and drain it out into a you know, universal sprayer. Uh, this is done well. There's a cap if you want to put it back. Uh, it came with a foam sealer, and it was in a bag, should anything have spilt. So there's no complaints on that front. Uh, it is biodegradable if that's a concern for your area, but it actually did a pretty good job again there's kind of some quick instructions and like i said for 21.95 you also get a pretty good amount uh, 32 fluid ounces compare that with what you would pay uh, to stack up competitor products you do pretty good with it so uh, up next we're going to come in and take a look at this now spoiler alert at the back end of the video we will take a look at this in the same location but we'll populate it we're not going to do that right now because i don't have any pliers handy or actually i do uh, there's just not many of them now this as you probably can guess is a plate holder for the dishwasher that we're going to install in the shop tuesday now not really this is a pliers rack although it does look like a plate holder and i've actually cut down you know the when people garage sale dishwashers and stuff and i get drugged to them i'll sometimes like pull out the microwave racks they don't really sell those anymore uh, and then this was another item I would try to pick up because I could cut it down and it would hold pliers and pretty much anything else I wanted it to fairly well. That said, I have one that I've used for the German toolbox. And the problem with that one is it's full. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just out of capacity. And subsequently, that's a really long one, like 20-something inches. And uh, I need to try and streamline things. I'm going to try to run this on the side of the drawer. And so pick this one up. It's from Olsa Tools, but virtually any of them in this price point, regardless of the brand, uh, there's like Aris, ABN, they're all, I'm pretty sure, the same thing. Uh, but I just went this route this time, $12.99 was the price. Every once in a while, you'll catch one like four cents to a dollar cheaper. My advice, go with the cheapest one because they are identical. Uh, this one, it is a, uh, dimension-wise, we're looking at 14 inches long. It's going to be six inches wide, and then our height figure, this is important, depending on the drawer, you're going to put it in two and a half inches tall. Uh, so you'll definitely want to pay attention to those measurements. The other key measurement is going to be where my index finger is. That gap is going to be three quarters of an inch. Uh, if you've got some really fat comfort grip stuff, uh, you might want to measure ahead of time, make sure what you have is going to fit. Clearly standard dipped handles like this on a little mini Cobra. 
no issues but when you start getting in like the super super you know expansive comfort grips could run into issues better to be disappointed before you purchase it as opposed to being out $13 and disappointed so uh, we'll go ahead and open this sucker up uh, but we will set that sucker down we'll get to view that side this one's bent we'll get to straighten that out uh, the part number which you can go direct through also that's one of the cool things about them is right there i'm not going to bother with it it is made in taiwan holds 16 pliers it's red would i prefer something else yes <laughs> color wise you bet but actually to give you an idea that was by hand my left hand my non-dominant hand so very easy to work with and the important thing to highlight from that is if we come in with a good cutter and say that you were going to go sideways in your drawer or you only had this much real estate and you need to lop off the back three you can do that uh, this is just vinyl coated steel and uh, it's very easy to work with so that's what we would be looking at again would i prefer a different color absolutely i'm not necessarily a red person however what i thought this would work for is the nws pliers as dumb as that sounds uh, i've kind of got like channel lock klein knipex a couple of vihas you know in the main long rack and all my NWS ones are off to the side, and I thought, you know, that would actually look pretty good with their handles. So, spoiler alert, that's what I plan to do with it. So, that's really all there is to it. Uh, it's the same design as everyone else's. It is decent quality. It's not like you're getting a total piece of trash. Uh, I think they could definitely sell these less than $12.99. But at the same time, could you whip that out and make one? Yes, but would you invest more of your time than is worth $13? Most likely so therefore not a bad deal so with that said we're going to jump in now to our third tool and uh, this one kind of ties in with something i picked up from kc tool which i haven't gotten to make a video on and we will do the dramatic drop down for you that's right you know what this is yet most of you probably do and if you didn't you are now officially disappointed because you do know <laughs> and, uh, what this is, this is from Supco. This is called their Handy Ring Fin Comb Set. This set me back all of $8.26 if you need to look for it. Their part number will be FCR6. Now, straightens and cleans evaporators and condenser fins. Six of the most popular fin combs on a convenient ring. Fits in the toolbox for easy access and prevention of loss. I mean, let's face it, if you lose one of these, you're going to lose them all. And luckily, since they are in bright colors, I realize that kind of looks dorky. A lot of you would prefer black or just a natural aluminum or as finished plastic. If you drop these, whether it's a sidewalk, grass, dirt, rooftop, these will stick out like a sore thumb, at least one of these colors, and it will help you locate the tool so you don't have to continue buying them. And it can be used on the ring or removed for individual use. For example, if all you're going to use is the blue one and you get tired of carrying this stuff around, take it off. Go to town. So backside here, we're actually going to try to peel this sticker off because they covered up the most important thing I care about. Uh, which is the actual specs and it may get trashed if it does my apologies i can't really grip with the tip of my thumb which makes this extra interesting and we screwed it up uh, maybe not i'll tell you what uh, let me uh pause this to not waste your time and i'll see if i can do this again simple things like this become ridiculously difficult uh, when you lack the functionality of your dominant hand thumb so i've got a, a trick up my sleeve there that i think might work and if it does we'll have a glorious reveal so using the powers vested in me by this inconspicuous looking hazette pocket screwdriver complete with this soft side scraper i've gotten the annoying sticker off and we can unlock a wealth of information now truth be told you can come in and buy these individually if it's a case where you are a meticulous homeowner or maybe you work in HVAC and you know exactly what you sell and what you'll have to be called out to service this would be of use for everyone else you're probably better off just buying the set and making do with what you've got uh, but essentially the way this is going to work if you can see the part number there FC 0810 this next column is fins per inch, as you might have guessed, 8 and 10, flip sides. And then the color for that one is going to be orange. Coming in next, FC0915, you're going to have 9 and 15 on their respective ends. It is going to be yellow. 
Our blue comb is going to be 11 and 13 fins per inch. The green comb, 12 and 14. The lime green, 16 and 17. And then what they call red, which I call the maroon, uh, that will be 18 and 20. So not only is that useful if you are meticulous and somehow have kept records, but let's say that you bought this set and you really like it and have good luck with it or you're constantly using it and wearing out one particular size. The good news is you can come in, you can use that chart, or you can probably find it on these fins. We're going to actually try and figure that out. Yes, it is stamped. Uh, so you could then come in and just purchase the replacement. Maybe get tired of carrying the ring around because you just find that you only use like two set sizes all the time. You can go that route and pick up some backups. But truth be told, 826 for the set of six, not terrible price-wise. So... The ring is nothing fancy. Uh, it is very easy to articulate. Uh, again, I'm not left-handed, but I currently am. I can open it up just fine. So even though they are a big opening and kind of cumbersomely awkward, you'll be able to uh, move them on and off the ring without any issues. If we can get it to focus, you can see there, this is the Fincomb FC1820. And if you recall from what we just looked at, 18 and 20 should be the fins per inch. This right here, which the question is, can we get it? I think you can see that. That is 20 fins per inch. That means on this flip side, we're going to have, or I guess that's 20, and this one is 18. So there you go. I think it's probably easiest to see it on the yellow. Just going to go out on a limb and assume that's the case. Right there, you can see the part number, Fincomb 0915. That's going to again tell us 9 and 15. You can easily discern the difference between those two. 18 and 20, a little bit more challenging. Oh man, I thought you'd easily be able to see that one. Looks like I was wrong. You can, uh, <laughs> you can see that there's text there, but it is hard to read. 9 per inch in person without the glare. It certainly comes through a little easier. Let's just let's just cut our losses and try the blue one. So we're looking at FC 1115, 1113. Can we read that one well on camera? Sort of. You can see per inch really well. The 11 is difficult to see. That is purely on camera. If I bring this up to my face, it is easy to see them. But if you're curious why I brought these in, got to come in and uh, it's one of those deals insurance is weird and instead of like totaling out a completely held up you know unit they want you to comb it and i'm not bringing a plumber out to do that i'm going to do it myself and uh, take care of it and really i mean they're past the point you can't make them perfect uh, this is Texas. They really shouldn't, you know, build homes without covered units, in my opinion. But, you know, people are cheap and do what they want to. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to fix it myself. And uh, at that point in time, we'll have a review of do these actually work. Seems to be the case. People that are hell-bent on doing it themselves uh, say sometimes you have to use a couple of different sizes or the wrong size or a pair of pliers or a razor blade. But if you're patient enough, you can at least make it presentable. Which, what does that accomplish? It flows air properly or closer to what it should do. So, uh, $8.26, though, not a terrible price. So we'll see how well they hold up if we like them or not. Yeah, I apologize. I decided to go ahead and make a standalone video on what I was going to do for Halloween. So I'm not sure if I'll edit that out at the start of the video or just leave it in there and then apologize here. But I uh, started in on it and I thought, you know, I think it's cool enough and unique enough that we just keep it standalone at least. So, didn't get it done for Halloween, but it will be coming. And what I want to do now, though, is I promised you we'd come in and we would test fit some of this. <laughs> and, uh, as I went to my plier drawer, I instantly had a sinking feeling because I saw that the one that I had was way wider than this. And uh, it fits all kinds of comfort grips just fine. And uh, this one I'm a little worried about. <laughs> so we're going to figure it out. We're going to go from like ancient to modern. And uh, right here I've got some really old CT Co stuff from my grandfather. They drop in tons of different ways to skin a cat. It kind of depends on the fitment. Uh, here's some old Craftsman, which I'm surprised. I don't even know that I knew I had those. <laughs> I was looking for these and found that. So that works well. Uh, let's come in now. We've got some Kleins right here, which I made a video on this a long time ago and never used it, but I've been using these recently. I had to do some stuff for my sister. That is a the dorkily thick kind of padded handle from Klein, and they seem to tuck in just fine, so that's good news. Uh, let's jump now to Channel Lock. We're going to start with their 
classic dipped handle on the 909s here. That fits without any issue, but we're getting real close to having that kind of max out on us, which is a little scary. I'm not going to lie. Uh, let's come in here. These bad boys that I use for A inlines more than anything. That's a fat grip, and it is... Oh, it fit. Okay, good. I was very, very concerned. Uh, that's... It's about as tight as we, we probably want to get it, but I am impressed that that actually fits, so we've got that going for us. Let's jump now to which door. Uh, we've got these special ones here with the dip handles, which I actually really still like the feel of that. Let's put those face down just for the heck of it. That's fine. Those clear. I've got their grip pliers, which are amazing. Kinipex has some of these that you can sometimes catch on sale. Uh, that's just a bulky tool that you might want racked. No issues with the comfort grip, but again, just the sheer size of it. Doing good there. Very concerned about this. Love the way this feels in hand. I've been using these too, uh, by the way, on the Challenger the last couple of weeks. Not sure that we're gonna... Oh, yeah. That's disappointing. Um, you could technically, like I said, there's lots of different ways you can position this stuff. I could honestly kind of wedge it in there, but the problem comes when we say come in with the next pair and have to do that again. That's really kind of the limit. In fact, I don't really like those in there at all. <laughs> so, you could technically make them fit uh, if you wanted to. Let's see if the code blue actually even fits. It's the same way. Those cable cutters, for whatever reason, I guess aren't as fat of a pad. In fact, you can even see it here just visually. That's not even going to press down. You could force it, but you're definitely going to deform the rack holder. Uh, let's come in now. You're probably very concerned, and rightfully so, about Knipex, which the red would be nice for it. Uh, these holes puller pliers, which I've gotten to use quite a bit the last week or so, uh, have been really good to me, and they're going to fit just fine, aside from my right thumb not wanting to help them any. Uh, we'll step up now to their textured handle, right? Uh, so we've got some Raptors here. Let's go ahead and drop those in. Shouldn't be an issue. They fit fine as well. Now, this might not be the best representation, but uh, this is currently one that I don't have racked in part, I guess, because I use it quite a bit. Uh, and you can even tell by how loose it's become. So, still tight, but when you first get this thing, man, it's real tight. So, uh, this is just a crimp tool from Knipex. Let's see if we can fit her in. Surprisingly so. So that is good news now. The hand guards here might present an issue. It actually kind of makes a nice rest stop. As you can see, it's not going to come forward, uh, but it does fit, so I was concerned about that. Now, the reason that I really truthfully bought this, as I mentioned, was for the NWS pliers, because currently I don't have any of them in the rack. They're just kind of off in the front, and I'm wanting to cut this down, fit it to length, and go to town with it. So we're going to start here with our needle nose from them. Oh, man. it's It's just about... If you drop it down here, it's going to fit. You can see this contour and the handle is kind of just ever so slightly. This is like a hot curvy chick, right? You got the waistline and then we just kind of kick out a little. Uh, it's a little too much of a kick out. Now you can set it down in place and it'll rest. But if you were trying to stack that, kind of maximize your floor space or your drawer space in this case, not really going to happen. I'm thinking we're going to run into the same exact issue here with our combo pliers yeah they just they need to be a little bit wider realistically you're going to move from three quarters to one inch uh, or something very close to it uh, these fantasticos same thing now we could technically you know change the way we're putting them in the holder uh, which you know like I said there's lots of different ways to do this but if we come in and we duck those under the back beam you know, essentially, if I were to pick up on this, we could tilt it like that. They sort of fit, but if you wanted to do them like I typically do, like this is a situation if somebody came over and was like, hey, you know, my side marker's out, can you help me? I would know that I need to cut and crimp, and so I would grab the 909s and I just lift up on them, right? We can easily see and identify which one's which, and I just grab them. There's no fuss, no issue. I could tell somebody, hopefully, you know, to go grab the ones and sort of describe them. Uh, but with these NWSs, we can't position them like I prefer to. 
I try to use my thumb and uh, it sometimes rewards me and sometimes doesn't but it kind of fits but it would be ideal if it was a little bit wider that said I can make things populate in that manner uh, just sort of getting it resting in place and then we kind of just deal with the big end down here the good news is I already have a rack holder in place that I like that is fully populated. Since I did intend for this one to kind of be for my NWS stuff, I'll try to make it work. I could potentially cut and make kind of inch and a half slots, although that cuts your capacity down. Uh, bottom line is I will play with this and try to figure it out. For the vast majority of pliers, particularly if you don't care about comfort grips, uh, this is going to work fine. In fact, it would even be a little bit loose. Uh, then again, if you step down much lower, you're probably going to have a lot of slop and hate it. This, it'll just be kind of a trial. I'll sort of get it in place, see how I want things laid out, decide what I need to do to make it work. But uh, you can work with the material. It does have some flexibility to it. But this gives you an idea of what it will look like populated in a drawer. So that's cool as well. Uh, personally, I wish this stuff is so simple. I wish they would just offer it in more colors, you know uh, For example, if I could get blue Guess what's going in there the Ghidor and even if they wanted to just like special order or low batch them or if I needed blue one inch wide for this stuff uh, which these are probably the fattest comfort grips, which is awesome when you're using them, but when you try to use some like universal tool holder, uh, sort of negative, I guess, but in person and in hand, these, and they get better as you've used them, so I have found. But uh, that's where we're at. I'll kind of, like I said, figure out what I want to do with it, but anything standard, non-padded, you're okay. Anything dipped or anything with like just the low key texture, uh, sort of like we have here with these uh, Ghidors or uh, the Raptors from Knipex, which is essentially just ever so slightly thicker than a true dipped handle. You will have zero issues. When you start to get into the comfort grip, take measurements and uh, don't be disappointed. So uh, That said though, I think we can work with them like this. And again, you can get the feel that that's pretty solid. I'm able to jump this up and down on the table. So we'll see what we can do but that said that is this amazon tool haul again my apologies for dragging out the halloween spooktacular video who knows maybe i'll save that for next halloween because i'll at least have the tool this time but uh we got the plier rack here from olsa tools 12.99 not a bad price uh given what you've got uh we picked up these supco fin combs which i'm going to try out and see how well they hold up uh, if they suck you will definitely hear about it if they work well i won't be as inclined to make a follow-up i'm sure some point in time i'll remember it and just casually mention it and then went ahead and tried the aero cosmetics wash and wax which turned out to be pretty decent so it's something it's not necessarily the highest end stuff you could probably do better but for the rush I was in and just needing something, it worked out good because I got it in two days. Um, it's sort of a daily nail if you just have something in storage and it gets dusty or if it's inoperable type of thing but you want to keep it clean before you tarp it. That's sort of what I picked it up for and it did the job just fine. But so, With that said, that was this random haul from Amazon. And uh, As I mentioned, we do have something else special but uh, it'll at least be standalone possibly even save it for halloween as dumb as that sounds we'll we'll figure something out so with that said thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed if you've used any of this stuff if you like it if you hate it let me know your thoughts what are you doing for plier storage you just have them loose in the drawer do you have foam cutouts that you made yourself do you have a buddy with a cnc laser uh, do you use this stuff? Do you have to custom modify it? Are you using ancient dishwasher parts? Let me know. Leave the comment. Again, that is the goal here to kind of share information, see what everyone's doing, uh, have some other options open up to people. But like I said, I bought this for my NWS stuff. I'll see if I can make it work. And eventually we'll probably showcase it in the drawers at some point in time. But uh, it is what it is. This is what we got from Amazon. Links will be down below. Make sure you are following along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All three at Lone Star Mopars. The forum, of course, will be LoneStarMopars.com. You can find all the links there. If you have not subscribed, I encourage you to do so. We will have videos out every Saturday. Sometimes during the week, if you jump through all the hoops and ring all the bells, maybe they'll notify you. Also, I want to stress, I try to mention this as best I can, if you like the look of this glove, if you like alpha gloves that you've seen in my other videos that I've been wearing to work in, particularly these Renegades as of late, 
We have a pretty substantial discount on them. The discount code will be Lone Star. You can find them at alphagloves.us. And that brings me back to this point. All I've used this mechanic glove for is like non-work related things. And it was just to kind of keep my thumb protected and kind of, you know, support it a little bit. And it is coming apart right there. You can actually see it. I'll zoom in to make it even more clear. Which is bizarre to me. I mean, this is literally going to tear. And these are extra larges because I went ahead and I was unsure what I needed. And this seemed to fit better than the large, particularly with a swollen thumb, right? And I, you can tell, this is a clean glove, right? Uh, this is my damaged hand glove, which I don't use near as much. And it looks like that. This is mint. I could put these back on the shelf at Northern Tool, essentially. And for whatever reason, I'm tearing that. And that is not, not a good thing. Uh, it leads me to suspect that this glove is probably going to wind up like all my other mechanics gloves, which typically, I know these are super dirty, but uh, they fail in the same places over and over again. And I'm afraid that's going to be the case here. I will continue using it, will continue to monitor, uh, but thought that was worth mentioning. Currently in the process of testing out a ton of gloves. I really like the Alpha stuff, the others. We don't really have enough seat time to make a definitive early assessment, if you will. Uh, but again, that is a pretty big discount. It's roughly 33% off, which I actually didn't check the code until the other night when my friend was saying she was going to get some for her dad. And uh, I was like, wow. You know, I figured it'd be like 10 or 15. It's 33%, and that makes them really, really a nice option for you. But uh, that said, I will quit rambling. Hope you enjoyed, learned a little something, and I will catch you back here for the next one.